So, Madam Chairman, um, tonight, uh, uh, straightforward items, I think, for the most part. We'll do a couple little quick updates. Uh, let's do the landmark designation at the end, uh, if we will, and go through the, the items with members here, with uh, visitors here. The uh, area around us is going to get busy here pretty soon. There's a concert at Scott Trade Center. Uh, and we have a planning commission member or two that need to leave in about 45 to 50 minutes. So uh, let's be expeditious if we can. Uh, obviously, the materials are pretty complete. PowerPoints have pictures in them. We may try to alleviate a lot of narrative about the pictures and let the pictures do the do the talking and, and go from there. Is there anyone on the phone right now? No. But as you know, that's how we record ourselves to right. get, get on the phone. Okay. And I know you will begin with the minutes from April 1st. Uh, I will just say that staff was very kind and generous that they made no notation in the minutes as to how cranky I was last month. <laughs> if, if you want to hold a minute, Ivy is on the other line, which we'll have to cut this off to be able to get her on. And okay. I think the only way to do it is well, I tricked her information. She needs to know the access code to get in. Right. What was that? Right. She can't actually call this line. We're on the conference call, so I can't bring her on. Can we conference it? That's her. Can we move um, more? We have 30 seconds to make it. <laughs> okay. So we can't conference her. Yeah, there. she's gone. I mean, she needs to call in the conference call number. Everyone else does. Did you text her? Yeah. Right, we have a quorum. We'll try to get Ivy to join us on the conference call number. Okay. Are, are we set up now for recording? Yeah, it's still working. We just don't have Ivy. Okay. Uh, we'll begin the meeting. Uh, first item on the agenda um, is the minutes from April 1st meeting, which were distributed to in our packet, which arrived ahead of time. Do I hear a motion on this? No, move. Second. Then moved and seconded. Um, are there any corrections, additions, comments about the minutes? No. Um, would you read the roll, please? Uh, Alderwoman Creason? Aye. Uh, Chair Stouter? Aye. Commissioner Bradley? Aye. Commissioner Powers? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Spade? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Visentainer? Aye. And the motion passes with all present voting, yes. Okay, and as John has instructed us, we'll move down to the uh, items. That we'll take number four, item number four, Roman. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the commission. This is a uh, proposed rezoning of four parcels. Uh, 1714 through 1722 North 13th Street, the B multiple family dwelling district of the F neighborhood and commercial district. The, uh, the site is about a third of an acre in size. Um, it's located uh, near the intersection of 13th and Howard, um, a little bit north of downtown in the old North University. The existing uses are four mega plots. Petitioner would like to consolidate those four parcels with the adjacent parcel located to the south uh, in order to develop a $3 million transi transitional living facility for men. The uh, petitioner is Sunshine Ministries Incorporated, which owns uh, all of the parcels. Uh, the proposed facility would replace an existing facility, which is located a couple of blocks to the south. Um, and it's uh, also located a block to the east of uh, a newly constructed building which houses the organization's offices as well as the facility for women. Uh, Carol Clarkson is the executive director of the uh, Sunshine Ministries. is here tonight, and she'll be available for questions after the presentation. This is a, a map of the existing zoning for the area. As you can see, the four parcels are zoned B multiple family. Uh, this parcel to the south is ethnic and commercial. And, uh, the consolidation of parcels having multiple or having different zoning districts is not permitted, and that's the reason why the uh, petitioner has requested the zoning. This is a photo showing the uh, four vacant lots that make up the, uh, the zoning site. Uh, immediately to the east is the, uh, is the parcel that would be consolidated with those parcels. Again, it's a vacant lot with uh, a lot of dumping. Of, with pallets and, and tires. 
and the entire site that would be uh, developed stretches from this building here uh, to, to the street there. In terms of the adjacent properties, these are all parcels that are located on that same block. As you can see, it runs the gamut from industrial uses to residential uses and some vacant lots. Across the street, you pretty much have the same uh, picture, although there are a few more residences. Uh, the photo on the left is the newly constructed building that houses uh, Sunshine Ministries offices and facility for women. And the photo to the right is the uh, emergency an emergency shelter that Sunshine Ministries operates a couple blocks uh, to the south. And this building would eventually be replaced by the new This is a rendering that was submitted by the petitioner of the proposed facility. Uh, floor plan for the first floor. The facilities would include uh, a dining room, a kitchen, chapel, computer lab, and, and miscellaneous facilities with the uh, Bedrooms up on the second floor. The city strategic land use plan designates the entire site as a neighborhood commercial area, and while uh, social services and home shelters are traditional or classic commercial uses, they do provide the basic necessities for homeless people as well as people for needs. In addition, uh, the, uh, the zoning site is also located within the boundaries of two neighborhood plan that was adopted by the Planning Commission, um, the Downtown Development Action Plan and a plan for the neighborhoods of the Fifth Ward. The Downtown Plan uh, doesn't make any specific recommendations for the site as it's located on the periphery. In the case of the uh, Fifth Ward Plan, which you're seeing a slide here of, the proposed zoning map is actually recommending a rezoning to the F Neighborhood Commercial District. In terms of comments, the uh, rezoning would achieve three objectives according to the zoning administrator. It would continue to allow the applicant to provide high quality social services for homeless and those in need, as well as the two other objectives. Uh, as you saw, the rezoning is in conformity with the city's strategic land use plan, as well as the two adopted plans, and staff is recommending approval of the rezoning. I'm happy to answer any questions in this part of the Sunshine Ministry. Any of the commissioners have any comments or questions after the process? Is there a motion? Move no, approval. Second. Second. Please move. Then move that we um, approve the rezoning, sign it in conformity with the strategic land use plan, and sign the table ordinance. Uh, the previous goals have been requested. Are there any objections by any of the commissioners to the use of the previous goals? Can I do that with Dan? <laughs> <laughs> if, he, if he has no objection. <laughs> There's no objection. <laughs> we'll accept the previous role. And that is stands true. <laughs> Sorry to be ignored you, Dan. But. You may recall a while ago we had a, a similar applicant with a property that uh, been made available to him from McKee uh, out west Florida. So, just didn't pan out. So this is one that's resulting having worked with the neighbor. Okay, our next, we're taking the zoning item first round. Okay. Item number five. Good evening. Uh, our next uh, rezoning is uh, Resentia and Colors Inc. Uh, and uh, Patrick Ferrer, the project engineer, is here. Uh, and also, uh, Barbara Yardy, council. Um, it brings us a major addition about every five years. And, uh, we rezoned this area down here five years ago, and now they're uh, moving a little north uh, from Alaska. Uh, there's two residential uh, vacant residences that will be demolished. Uh, the site will be consolidated with the council, and then uh, they're proposing a new ink facility. Uh, after the rezoning, all of the sites will be J industrial, and rezoning responds to the city business and industrial development. This is the complex Jefferson Avenue, St. Louis, North Marcus, Pasco, the rezoning area is right in here. 
We were, a uh, previous name was Warner Jenkinson, and we operated under that name until about 2002. At that point, uh, our parent company, which had already changed its name from Universal Foods to Sentient Technologies, converted us to Sentient Colors uh, as a division. With this uh, rezoning, what uh, kind of expansion opportunities might you have then? Um, what we are considering on this site and overlapping the two properties that uh, J.D. Alvarez has right now um, is a digital links facility. We do operate a large facility in Switzerland for their same product. We felt that that um, product will become more popular in North America and in order to have a presence here. Right now we do res not resell, but we do distribute some of their products out of our facility to the Western Hemisphere. This would allow us to actually produce those products. That anticipated growth of point growth as well? It would be slowly at first. Um, we might have a couple, say, two to five. Uh, what's a little unknown and we're still discussing is, is how many laboratory personnel would be needed to support that production. Okay, up to, up to that. Well, <coughs> we're still debating <coughs> that number within our our company. Who cool. wants to carry? We had originally asked for seven people for the QC. So, if I can ask, uh, at this point, when you build out this area, you will be surrounded by that black scow. Actually, uh, we've vacated Elliott, oh. and we have our warehouse on one side of Elliott, main manufacturing on the other side of Elliott. And it looks like the summer will take there. Opportunity North Jefferson. Well, uh, there are some residences. I think that's in CD 2364. Uh, and if those are the residences, I'm thinking of. I guess where I'm going is, is just to understand if you continue to grow, what does the city do to? Continue to give it a new pathway. Um, <coughs> I was referring to this ground here. So we're we there. also have a lot of I think that the uh, corner where you see the paths it is a part of our facility right now. It's a walking path oh, for, uh, for employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the corner. And this is your employee park. That's, that's, yes. Come down here. So you don't feel like a lot of We try to pick up properties as they become available around us in order to give us a little bit of green space. Um, we've been able to, I guess, kind of stay ahead of any expansion by that property. And to try to green up a little bit of the area between Jefferson and the plant to be a little bit better of an entrance. Other questions? Second. And moved and seconded that we uh, <laughs> that we find the uh, petition for rezoning to today industrial uh, in conformity with the strategic land use plan, and that uh, we recommend its approval. And the previous role has been requested, but we can't call it with you, so it's on yeah, these new people. Um, so could you call the roll, please? Alderwoman Cruson. Aye. Chair Stouter. Aye. Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Commissioner Powers. Aye. Commissioner Pinkston. Aye. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Spade. Aye. Commissioner Visentainer. Aye. The motion passes with all present voting yes.
Great. Have any of you are, are trivia contest questionnaires, question producers? If you didn't get a few tidbits from that conversation to be in a trivia contest, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and we'll move on to the um, Hickory and Rutgers Street, uh, St. Louis U. Yes. Uh, we've had two rezonings on St. Louis U campuses in the last few months, and uh, this is a uh, medical campus. Uh, and uh, Dan Trump is here, the project coordinator of the St. Louis University. The site, the rezoning site is three and a half acres. Uh, this is the city block, it's the entire city block except for the two uh, facilities on spring. And the plan is to consolidate that with, of course, the key east, uh, also owned by St. Louis U. This looks like a street, but it's, it's actually a, a right of way, and I think the name is still coming up uh, on the map. Uh, but it's actually, you know, one large parcel of land. Uh, and uh, the proposal is to rezone uh, from J Industrial to H Area Commercial, like the frontage on uh, South Grand. Uh, this would allow St. Louis University's development of hospital and ambulatory care usage uh, in the medical center. This is an area on the site, and this is the development site. You can see it's just north of St. Louis University Hospital, across the street from research, uh, and uh, this is the zoning amendment, uh, combining it with the lease. Um, the front portion is already zone A, so it's, it's been, uh, most of the site is here. This is a view. These are views from the corner of South Grand. This is a view from up in the part of here. So uh, it's really growing in a large uh, area from J Industrial to H, and then match uh, the H along uh, South Grand. Which, uh, if you remember right, we rezoned the H in the main campus uh, a few months ago. Uh, in the vicinity to the south, of course, is the University Hospital. Uh, it continues back to the south. There's some of the service facilities and had an office building. Uh, and there's just two properties running on spring, and one is Drummond Hall. And, uh, Along the north side is, is a lot of residential. Actually, there's a lot of vacant land also owned by the university. And uh, there's basically like nine houses among the vacant land. And uh, the hospital, which is literally a hospitality house, is on, on Hickory, just uh, west of Grand. Uh, there's also vacant land to the north owned by SLU. And this is the Missouri Belt Company and the CBA site, which I think we will remember so much. Strategic land use plan, uh, this entire site and the development site is in institutional preservation and development area. Uh, the zoning administrator recommended the rezoning to H area commercial. So this is a unique opportunity to provide additional health care services. Uh, to the immediate and adjacent areas and bring this into conformity with the zoning. Uh, it's also in conformity with the strategic guidance plan and uh, staff uh, recommend approval of rezoning. Happy to answer any questions. Dan is also here. Do you have any questions? I have a question. This is Ivy. Go ahead, Ivy. Okay, uh, St. Louis, you are you really going to build this hospital now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we plan on it. When is it going to start? When is it going to be finished? Uh, they're working on the drawings uh, right now. Mm -hmm. okay. And so when do you expect to have it uh, finished, you think? Um, probably start in the next, uh, the next year. 
Mm hmm. Starting the next year and, and the construction period, you believe it's how long? I mean, I know it's in the uh, end of the right. Two years. Right. So by 2018, we should see something, correct? Yeah. Okay, because we approved this how many years ago? Fellow Commissioner? Well, well we, yeah. We were approved a different site. Yeah. Are you talking about when we were addressing the Peasley site? Yeah. 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 When was that? Yeah, it's all a part of, the, I think, a master plan, so. That was a while ago, yeah, right? It's, it's 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 been it's been demolished since then, and that's the area they're wanting to rezone uh, to match the rest of the camp. Okay, but we're going to see hospitals, we're going to see jobs, we're going to see, uh, you know, all you, you well-paid crew, uh, medical professionals, etc., cetera, uh, contributing to the earnings tax base of the city of St. Louis. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I wouldn't be wasting my time here. <laughs> okay, because you are my alma mater. All right? <laughs> so, I say that, but I'm voting. I voted before. And uh, we're all for it, okay? The console was for it when dear father Biondi was still there. So, <laughs> so the new president, what is his name? Fred Pacella. Yeah, tell him we want to see it. Okay, yes, we're serious. I'm a part of the construction department. It's job security for me. I want to build it as well. <laughs> okay, then, because i got a lot of friends who work at St. Louis Hewitt's positions. I want their money. Continually, okay? All right, thank you. Maybe we can become friends. <laughs> uh huh. You can right. take that back. <laughs> okay, I want all those people making all that money. We want the money. Nothing moving to the county. So that's my vote. I. Yeah, no, okay, go ahead. Time to resolve. Money is what matters. You pay my salary and part of those people sitting there, too. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ivy. Um, I guess my question was kind of, not not quite like Ivy's, but I was curious: is with this rezoning, uh, does this help you kind of complete the puzzle all the way down to the Peebly or all the way down to uh, Shoto, or is this just kind of the construction is just for this area here? The construction for this is just for this area here. Okay. So, I, we, so I guess to Ivy's point, this project here that's dedicated to kind of this major block area, mm -hmm. we're not going to see any activity down to show, though, the, the ambulatory. Facility. Not yet. That, there's still some properties we're still still trying to acquire, um, which is uh, to the north there, but yeah, eventually we plan to develop that area as well. But for right now, the ambulatory care center is just for this site. We plan on building it there and having a parking lot as well on that site that we're talking about today. Is, is that mm -hmm. the same project that was going to be on the people site? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Okay. Any other questions or comments? So we won't see any activity on the people site for some time then or until they until they give me the money to start working on drawings for that site. I, I can't. I can't guarantee anything. What's your hold up? Uh, didn't we give you all a tip and all that good stuff? What do we do, Don? I don't believe they have a tip. Oh. Remember, one of the things that they've been doing in the big picture is uh, working through issues with tenant, their hospital provider. We do expect, or I hear from SLU, uh, that the construction guy is saying they're going to break ground this year, but they're also trying to look at doing an overall redevelopment plan that would include portions of both the 17th Ward here and the 19th Ward uh, and go all the way up past Shoto uh, to uh, Metro Mike right away. We haven't seen that yet, but they've, they've been thinking in those terms. We would not, we, sorry, I may have missed her. We would not pass Shoto for the ambulatory care center. No. But the, the, the redevelopment plan in no. working with their partners in the neighborhood. Right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
any other questions or comments from the commissioners? Motion approval. Is there a second to the motion? Uh, then moved and seconded that we find the petition for rezoning to H commercial. We do previous roll. Uh, that we find that is in conformity with the land use plan and we recommend approval. Previous roll. Previous roll has been requested. Are there any objections from any of the commissioners of the use of the previous roll? Hearing none, no. All right. Ah. All right. Okay. Uh, we'll take the chapter 99. That's what's in. Yes, this is a Chapter 99 blending study and redevelopment plan for the 4526 to 4628 uh, Olive Street uh, redevelopment area. The site is about two and a third acres in size. It consists of nine parcels. It's uh, located on the south side of, of uh, Olive Street. Um, the like that. Then, uh, a couple blocks south of Del Mar and uh, one block east of uh, Euclid Avenue. The site is also located in the central west end of the historic district. The uh, existing uses are four vacant commercial buildings, two parcels that are currently being used by Bowwood Farms, which is a, a nursery located on the other side of uh, Olive Street and three vacant lots. Uh, the redevelopment plan is proposing uh, a two-phase development project. The first phase is a $6.2 million development project that consists of the renovation of two of the commercial buildings and the construction of a four-story residential addition above one of those buildings. The uh, prospective developer is Rothschild Development Limited, um, which is a developer that uh, is located a couple blocks away from the site and has done numerous uh, development projects throughout the Central West End neighborhood. The uh, second phase of the project includes an expansion of public funds and possibly some additional residential construction. Um, this is a aerial photo of the uh, redevelopment area and uh, the immediate vicinity. Um, although it's got a great location in the central west end, um, I think it's fair to say this is a struggling area and, and somewhat uh, underutilized. The photo on the left, uh, both of those show buildings that are currently owned by Rothschild Development. The photo on the left, uh, the vacant building that would be converted into four apartments. The photo on the right, uh, the ground floor, uh, 3,000 square feet of that would be used for commercial space. The rear of the building would be used for parking, and there would be a, a four-story addition that would be built above uh, that building. Um, there are two additional vacant commercial buildings that are in the redevelopment area, both of which are vacant, both of which have attached uh, surface parking lots. Um, the five remaining parcels in the redevelopment area are, are all owned by Bullard Farms, and as you can see, some of those parcels are currently being used for agricultural purposes. Uh, in terms of uh, adjacent properties across the street from the redevelopment area is Bullard Farms, which includes a, an outdoor storage lot where they have some of their uh, nursery items, uh, a retail shop, and a popular restaurant, Cafe Osage and uh, its parking lot. Further down the street is an interesting collection of buildings. Again, this is part of the historic district. Uh, it includes the Prince Hall Grand Lodge and the Taylor Olive Building. And immediately east of the redevelopment area is the, the Lister Building and uh, the side yard associated with it. This is a uh, rendering that was submitted by the uh, prospective developer. The uh, building on the far left uh, would be converted to residences. The, the large one-story building would have ground floor commercial in the front, parking in the rear, and that's the um, residential tower uh, proposed for it. Uh, this is another perspective I should note with uh, uh, Betsy's uh, uh, appearance here that uh, the Preservation Board approved the design of this building, uh, I think it was three months or so ago, and granted it preliminary approval. Uh, in terms of the city's strategic land use plan, it's designated as a specially mixed use area, which encourages a wide mix of, of uses. The development plan is proposing special and commercial uses as well as an expansion of the nursery. So uh, the redevelopment plan is in conformity with the strategic land use plan. It, it provides for the use of up to 10 years of tax abatement, 
no evidence remained as necessary, and staff is recommending approval of the writing study and redevelopment. <coughs> I'd be happy to answer any questions. And that remnant of, of black line, Mark, growing up. Mark, I'm sorry, of, of black line, which is the general contractor for the project, is, is here as well. If you have any questions. I have a question. Uh, Lida, you're there, right? No, Lida left. Well, Elida, it's in the it's in the 28th ward, but Lida has the best excuse ever for why she had to leave. Her son at 6:30 now is throwing out the ceremonial first pitch at the baseball game. Oh, 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 oh. that's great. Okay, I was going to ask Lida. It's in her ward, uh, and uh, what the developers there, Rothschild, right? Uh, here. The representative is from a general contractor associated with the developer, yes. Who is that? Who is the general contractor? Black line. Okay, you all have some minority participation, correct? Correct. Uh, who is it? Sorry? Who is your minority participation on this project? We haven't completed the construction documents yet to put it completely out to bid, but we've already uh, talked to BAM, Brian Murphy, uh, as well as SCAPE for the plumbing. Um, we've actually had pretty limited interaction with subcontractors so far, just uh, as we don't have construction documents yet. But we have, we have engaged uh, those two subs already, and so I think we've got a good jump start on the process. Okay, and the architectural firm is, is, is who? Arcturus. Who is that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Arcturus. Arcturus, do they have some participation? WV. Yeah, that's a <coughs> women-owned business. Women-owned business, I know they are, but there are MBEs too. Just highly recommend that you all look at uh, some... Uh, uh, local uh, minority uh, architectural participation as well. Sure. Okay. I'm sure it's built where you are right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, Ivy. Any other commissioners have any questions? Uh, the Chapter 9 area is much bigger than the space site. Just explain how the tax abatement works on that, on the undeveloped part of the site. My my understanding is that up to ten years of tax abatement would be would be provided to the developer. It's unclear as to who the developer would be, although um, all of the parcels but for one are associated with uh, parties who own the uh, wood farms. There's one parcel uh, between Rockstyle's development project and the remainder uh, that apparently is up in the air. But on those parcels, not in this phase of construction, the 10-year begins when they complete a project on that site. That's correct. And a designated development. That, you know, it's, it's an area that's being, the, the, the western portion of this, this block that's being incentivized with a redevelopment plan and, and one project happening in it, as opposed to, at the moment, a, a set site and giving them tax payment. So, Further development here might be goosed by this redevelopment plan, would be in accordance with the redevelopment plan, or may or may not take advantage of being designated to get tax advantage. Okay. Separate project. Okay. Okay. And just, you know, Roman showed you the pictures. This is one of those interesting sort of funky areas. The geography is uh, different because of the, the, the angles of the streets. There's a portion that's a historic district. It's uh, part of it is, is in the 18th ward, part of it in the 28th ward. You see some of the pictures of the storefronts. Some of them are used. It's, it's really one of those sort of classic edge areas. Uh, good to see some development. It's terminated right there by Second Press, too, which is that old Theodore Lane. There's a lot of potential there, unfortunately. It's, it's struggling currently, but uh, I, I think Bowman Farms is going to be has attracted a lot of people to the area uh, within the last few years. Commissioner Stave has made a motion that we approve. I agree. And we have seconded that uh, mm -hmm. we recommend the Chapter 99 Lighting Study and Redevelopment Plan and recommend it to the Board of Aldermen for approval. 
Um, could you read the role? Oh, any other questions or comments? Could you read? No, I would just say this to society. If it's part of a Centurion's ward, I highly suggest that you identify some more minority participation here in Kennedy. Okay, that's it. Okay. The roll, please. Sure. Uh, Sheriff Stouter. Aye. Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Commissioner Powers. Aye. Commissioner Pinkston. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Spade. Aye. Commissioner Visentainer. Aye. Motion passes with all present voting aye. Okay. Um, can we move back up to uh, the item that we skipped on the agenda, which is landmark designation for Maya Angelou's birthday? We're going to do our tag team. We get all of the visitors of each uh, PDA in one, one place. <laughs> This is a, a landmark uh, designation, and uh, it's for the single-family residence at 3130 Hickory Street. And it, this is Shoto and Kama <coughs> uh, English University Medical Center. Uh, it's two blocks south of Shoto and uh, half block east of Thompson. It's a uh, first single family home built in 1888, uh, but it sits among contemporary houses built in uh, 2000. There's, and you can see the, the, the footprint of uh, typical contemporary houses, and, but there's also other 1880s and 1890s houses. <coughs> and this block is really on the edge of the neighborhood. Uh, there's a hammer and uh, substation here, south uh, boundary. There's some vacant lots. Uh, so there's, there's potential there, and, uh, and a lot of things that have happened with the year 2000. So, so we're back in Compton Hill. I think um, we were the last landmark we brought to you, which is the Compton Hill Baptist Church up there. Um, yeah, where Dick's pointing out. And Compton Hill was a self-contained black neighborhood with places to work, lots of churches, corner stores, very densely developed. Um, and so we're looking at the individual building because, unfortunately, the neighborhood can't really convey what it was like when um, my angel was born there. Um, this landmark petition was um, initiated by um, Ms. Rhonda Wright, who owns the property and uses it as a residential rental. Also involved have been um, Alderwoman Davis from the very beginning and members of Maya Angela's family all were supportive of this effort. And then um, taking a look at the house and using the history we had and adding to it, um, and of course considering um, her, her great um, presence and personality, particularly here after unfortunately she died, um, all this attention focused on her as happened at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very easy to make the case that um, this building as her birthplace has significant character and value. Um, for the city of St. Louis, who likes it, to claim her as its own, um, although she didn't really spend very much time here. Uh, in fact, she lived here for three years of her life and then spent most of it with her father's family and uh, her father's mother in Stanford, Arkansas. And uh, then she came back and lived a couple blocks to the south on Carolyn Street for and was spent a school year in St. Louis in the 30s actually remembers that time uh, better. But it was a multi-generational household. This was the home, 3130 was the home of um, essentially grandparents or mother's parents. And they, and 
What's interesting, this is a very densely developed lot front, mid the building for multifamily flat building, just with one single family residence on that block. And her family, uh, grandparents were um, successful enough to own a single family dwelling. And um, so it's that sort of ability for it to stand out and be a little nicer than its neighbors is lost now, but still um, it does look very much the way it did when she was born there. It has a side entrance. Um, you can see it here in its setting with modern buildings on both sides and on the street. There are other historic buildings that they pointed out, but it's a very mixed neighborhood. Um, so she moved back to the school she went to was the older school, which has been replaced by a 1950s um, Mount Lewisher school that's in the neighborhood as well. So this was where, when she was in St. Louis, her life was centered here in this house and this neighborhood. The uh, significant rehabilitation of the property occurred in 2004, and I think it's interesting that the houses on each side were constructed before. So uh, this proposed landmark designation will advance the physical development of the city in, in two ways. Uh, first is adoption of the landmark plan and landmark standards will help ensure that inappropriate alterations of the house, you know, would be discouraged in the future. And I guess you get to the point of it is that then we continue to act as the president and uh, As Betsy pointed out, the Compton Hill Missionary Baptist Church uh, was nominated in 2013. And, uh, this really helps define the western edge. There's opportunity areas to the north that we don't quite know what's going to go in there. Uh, and the area to the west has become the St. University Medical So this is, it used to be in the middle of the neighborhood, but now it's kind of the western edge. And planning staff finds that, you know, together uh, it helps define the neighborhood. Uh, it's a strategic uh, neighborhood preservation area on the south side of Hickory, opportunity area, and then uh, this is the institutional, it's, it's the church. Uh, the proposed city landmark designation is in conformity with the strategic planning plan, which encourages new and rehabilitated housing, which obviously the flock has. Uh, the proposed landmark designation will have a positive impact on the physical development of the city. And uh, we're asking you to ask the PDA director to notify the preservation of the planning commission director. Uh, the planning commission acts as an advisory body to the preservation. Is the house currently uh, a resident? Yes, um, it's a, um, Luna lives over in Illinois now. She has this further field. She has plans to keep it as a rental property. The standards we developed for do address the signage or whatever in case it would be used as more of a museum or some other kind of use to, related to remembering Los Angeles. I think it'd be kind of cool if it was a residence for a visiting scholar or something like that. Yeah. But, um, so far, it's her rental income property. And, um, you should, will she put a plaque on it or anything with this designation? I don't know. We don't. Um, it would be her choice. Most of our landmarks don't have plaques. We don't have that program very strongly here. But she could. I think it says she could put a plaque on the building or a modest monument sign in the front yard. Other questions? Or something? Yeah. Yeah. Motion approval. Second. Second then. Previous roll. Previous roll. requested. Are there any objections? Commissioners here or I be on the phone to the meeting? No, I have no objection. See no objections. Hearing no objections, the uh, matter stands approved. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
you, Madam Chairman. The other of the delegated items, I'd be happy to discuss either here or after. And then the informational item on the zoning notifications. Dick showed his master sort of inventory chart last time. Uh, and uh, Michael showed some pictures of, of examples. We're con continuing to do th two things. Uh, scrutinize the chart of uh, what other cities in Missouri are doing under their laws, getting their examples, and getting other sort of creative examples of the physical posting. Uh, short three people is a little challenging to get that done on a timely basis. And then we've been, I've been loaned somebody that's half my age, um, Patrick Smirks, I'm going to put here, uh, in, in that I've tasked him to sort of look at best practices around the country where there's media use for uh, and social media use and other ways of electronically getting the word out about development projects. So uh, he's working on that. I hope to know more about that by tomorrow. And so next time, unless it's a real full agenda and staff's uh, pretty jammed up, we'll, we'll go through the matrix again. We'll, 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 we'll show some displays of examples and begin to structure some decision making. Great. And thanks for the putting out the information on it. So will this be a recommendation then of the Planning Commission to the board for changes or what do you foresee as a phase? I think there'll be a big discussion about it here and, and <coughs> certainly we'll take what we discuss. And so part of it is a reminder of where the budget comes from for doing these things. Right. And part of it Part of it is, is a dust off of how we can it, and part of it is what are good changes to make, and think about the budget type of stuff. And so you we'll acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Any new business that anyone has? The yeah. other is just that we talked about uh, last time that I'd also send a letter to remember the. Right. There was a conditional use process would occur for for a convenience store, uh, which is part of a law, that, uh, part of a change to the ordinance that, that we we concluded. So the neighbors will have uh, a direct say in, the, in that convenience store that we talked about at Birchland and Marcus, and we had some discussion items uh, about communicating some of our thoughts about that. Uh, there was not yet a recommendation from the alderman, so this is the. The, the draft of a letter that and uh, I included some photographs taken at the site which you all requested also and I think uh, look at photo number two there's a, a white wall with wood and behind that is especially in photo three you can see uh, that there's a small retaining wall and the stockade fence uh, and their proposal is to uh, include that former residential parcel in the gas station site and build a taller retaining wall and fence. And so that's where some of the language is dealing with the views from the single family house. And this, this is an occupied house. Uh, uh, I know it may look at the metal shutters that you can close and open, but it's easy to occupy and there's a warning about the dog. So I, I think there's several occupants. Uh, and they, this is being used as a side yard for the residents now, but it's owned by the gas station. Uh, and so the another thing from our tire kicking on that process is uh, some consideration of how the NSOs might be able to be a little bit more helpful in some of the neighborhood context information that we'd like to know about. Mm. I, did, I, I see there's mention here about the trash dumpster. Was there any, um, it seemed to me just looking at that plan, if I recall that it would be really advantageous to use the alley for the trash yeah. pickup and not the street where the porch is. There, can we be a little bit more specific to that in this letter, or at least recommend that? People it's a recommendation, so why not? Sure. Sure. Uh, you led much of the discussion about the retaining wall height and the fence about, about it, 
And so, clue me in, that was an issue, but then how it relates to the alley is put the dumpster in the alley? Yeah, they had the dumpster sited on the, the street side, the port mm -hmm. side, and, and it seems simple enough to make that switch. I don't know why the designer sided it that way. We'll polish that up and pass that along. Okay. Thanks for doing it, Dom. Dick did the work. <laughs> Thanks for doing it, Dick. So, did, so can someone brief me on this? It passed last time. <coughs> Provide those as a recommendation or a follow-up letter. Yeah, yeah. So we have a 45-day clock to deal with rezonings. Uh, and remember, much of the detail of a rezoning occurs at, at, at the Mary shop when it came in. But this had some aspects that we were quite concerned about relating to the neighbors and the geography of the of the wall. So they they provided a site plan, and I think some of it, the convenience store is moved to be next to the house, and in some ways it blocks the yeah. view. And, and, that, and it's not, you know, so a lot of the noise and light is on the other side of the store now. Uh, so I think there was general consensus that this was going to operate much better, and the concern was the specifics of the design, and, and the planning commission was looking at the rezoning, and you know, they were nice enough to show us the site plan. They don't have to do that, but Which technically, those issues we don't have jurisdiction. Yeah, but on, so we may comment. Right. But I think our, it's our job, though, is to, if you rezone a residential lot, the idea is not to continue creating decay down the face, you know, the face of the block. And so, yeah. I felt that in kind of the protection of that neighborhood that we had to have that discussion to make sure that that would be upheld or else that you're going to have a new vacant home right next to the gas station. So so two things. Is one, yes, fine. That is a role in our system for Mary Stanton to do when it comes in. And then second, what we sort of realized is that this particular use has the effect of the of, of, Alderman Cone, we did a modification on convenience stores in particular so that there is a conditional use in these neighborhood contexts for, for convenience stores and therefore that public part that might not show up at the Board of Alderman hearing would be at that conditional use hearing. Much of our concern at the time was about some designs of, con of convenience stores so we said what the hell, let's send this letter to the to the conditional use process. The alderman on his own is environment is is uh, a tire kicking and evaluating. But it gave us a chance to, to, to deal with it in the forty five days. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you. you have any conversations with, with people that live? No. Okay. Just the dog schedule with my <laughs> That's one of the that's what I said one of the reasons that is a little, uh, one of the old photos, Ariel had a blue tarp on there. It must have been damaged at one point, but other aerials showed it later than that. Showed mm -hmm. it so they have not shown any inclination to get engaged in this rezoning. But uh, we don't know that it may or may not have with the alderman. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I, I have a little tire kicking in the back of my head of how to involve the NSOs a little bit more proactively in that type of stuff. Okay. They'll, therefore, those, because of the conditional use, it will be posted and they'll have two opportunities at the Board of Aldermen for the rezoning and the conditional use for it being a convenience store to, to get to the neighbors. So if you just want to make sure that you change the bit about the dumpster. Any uh, need for an executive session? Not this time. Right. There's no other business. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.